I think we all come across a little bit of fear when it comes to um, sharing the opportunity with people because what are some reasons why we might be a little fearful? Anybody have some? Come on, I know you're thinking of it, but you're just not saying it. My, my biggest one was like when I called like customers, I really have a patient yet, but that I've warmed to enough to know I want them on my team. It was like they are going to think I am insane. They're going to cancel their appointment. They're not going okay. to do anything. They're going to be scared of you and never call you back. Okay. Yeah. Fear of rejection. Someone saying no to you? Anybody else? Yeah. Well, I just started my business in September, so being really new, I don't even know what I'm doing okay. yet. Okay. So somebody else. What if they ask me a question and I have no idea what to say, right? Okay. And I'll look stupid or something like that. Okay. Well, I, I've been in my red jacket for a while, and I've had people get in, get excited, and then disappear. Okay. And that, that's always been like my fear. Like, you'll get started, and then Is this going to be a person that yeah. does well, and I just, yeah. Okay. Great. And you know, all those things come up, I think, now and then when you're, when you're team building. But um, what, she, what she said in the video that was so, I thought was so great and so key was that, um, you know, just like any professional does things over and over and over again, the reason why a director becomes a sales director or someone earns a car or they become an executive or they're a Cadillac driver or they're a national is just because they've done more. They've just done more. They've done more interviews. So the only thing stopping, you know, as a professional, we have to do it over and over and over again and get practice too at it. Get really good at sharing the um, opportunity with women. So as you do more, you'll move up. So obviously, I haven't done enough yet to become a Cadillac driver, but I'm going to. I'm going to do enough so that I can reach that level. Just like maybe you feel like I haven't gotten my red jacket yet. Guess what? You just have to do enough to become a red jacket. That's it. So we're here to help you with that. And tonight's training, we're going to talk about team building because it is the most exciting time to do team building right now, isn't it, ladies? Mm -hmm. With the April promotion going on of the starter kits. I talked about the video and we're on to this. Wonderful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So we're going to start. We've already talked about what's in here? No. Okay. So we're going to start by first telling you what goes into a recruiting packet. A packet of information. These little cute bags. You do not have to use these, but these are so adorable, and they come from mygirlfriendshouse.com, and you get them for 10 cents a bag. So if you'd like to use these, they come in all cute little things. They're great for reorders, too. I put a lot of reorders and, and hostess packets, team building packets inside of these. So cute little things. You can feel free to order those. If not, you can simply use a little folder you get from Staples. You can find the kind of the pockets of business card. So inside a recruiting packet, I'm going to show you what I put in my team building packet. I think is less is better personally. I think when you load up a whole lot of information, how many of y'all love to know every detail about everything? A lot of you do and that's great, but a lot of people like myself don't like a whole lot of detail. So if you hand me 10 pieces of paper, I'm not gonna read them. But if you give me a few that are really good information, I'm gonna read them. First thing, make sure your business card's in there. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? You need a business card. Second thing is Mary Kay makes a wonderful team building brochure. This one happens to be an older one. The new ones look a little different, but the company provides wonderful literature that's not expensive at all. I love to put something printed by the company because that makes us look genuine and authentic, right? You know, like, it's not just printed off somewhere. It's actually from the company. It's a great little brochure that has lots of wonderful information. So I would suggest putting the company's team building brochure. I don't know how much they are for a pack of, anybody know, I probably should have looked it up, but. $2, Two dollars or something for a pack of them. They're not expensive at all. I also like to put the marketing plan mm -hmm. income. This is on Facebook as well as it's also on um, Cisco, not Sister Cisco. Yeah. It's also on our um, website. And this is great because it has the marketing plan that shows that we earn our free forms income. We earn cars. We earn money by classes and also team building. It has it broken down. So it's a great sheet. And I'll pass this around if you guys want to see this. We'll pass that around to you. Mm -hmm. Then I put the starter kit flyer. I think it's really important to put starter kit flyers so people can see what they get for their hundred dollar investment. Of course, I know this month seventy five, but for their hundred dollar investment, I put that. So those are the only three pieces that I put in there. But it's got everything. The team building brochure has everything. The starter kit flyer and that great little marketing that shows the different avenues you make income and also gives some examples of how many classes you hold, how much money you can make as well. Sound good? Any questions on my hosted the recruiting packet? Pretty simple. Now, if you decide to put a couple more items in yours, that's totally okay. I just wouldn't spend a whole lot of money printing out 10 color copies of every piece of information you think somebody needs because you're going to overwhelm her. Yes, Ashley. The marketing plan sheet, is that similar to the um, avenues of income brochure? It's coming. Do you know what I'm talking about? 
I think so. Mm -hmm. um, it's like it's the the bifold or the yeah, it's the bifold with the yeah. picture of Mary. Oh yes, exactly. Back. It yeah. is. It's a, almost you can do either one. So you can do okay. the avenues of income, or you can do that one. The only thing about the the, the double what's it called a trifold? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that um is that. It's, it's got a picture of Mary Cash, which is beautiful of Mary Kay, but for your Gen Ys, seeing a picture of Mary Cash, not that she's not a beautiful, lovely lady, because she is, but our Gen Ys are going to look and go, wow, this is for old people. And I don't mean not to say it mean because I'm in that bracket, but, you know, 20-something club looking at it is going to go, oh, you have to, you know, be older to do Mary Kay, and that's just not the image we want to give. So I like that trifold, but it just depends on the audience that you're talking to or you're giving a packet up to. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I say something? What I've been doing for years is I, I exclude the first page and I just print out the second page. And oh, I put with all the information on it. it. It just has the information. Oh. Well, it's just like that, that's pretty much that. And it's just, it, well, yeah, but I don't print out the, the first page. side. Okay. The last side has all the you know avenues of income and lists, just like the book yep. that you're talking about. Yep, exactly. Okay. So um, that's a, put together. You want to have 10, 15, 20 of these put together ready to go. You don't ever go to a party and go, oh, I don't have any building packets I don't have any you know things ready get 20 of these ready okay get 20 of these ready you know pay someone pay a teenager to put them together pay, bring your okay pay someone to put them together your kids somebody to get those ready for you any questions on that we all set okay now I want to talk to you about different ways of sharing a little bit of marketing at your appointment Tanya's going to go over how to individually close somebody to book an interview and how to do an interview but I want to teach you how to do some fun ways to just share a little bit about the marketing plan during your class or at an appointment. Because you want to get women thinking about, oh wow, that sounds fun, I can do that. Or oh wow, I didn't know that you make 50% of what you sell. Little different ideas. And so there's two ways I'm going to give you. And to do that, I'm going to have some little handouts for you. You're going to love. Come on, <laughs> I see Katie's taking video. Yeah, Katie's taking videos. We're going to have pass these out. And if I can have one of those, Tanya, that would be great. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is um, called ticket marketing. You want to make sure if you don't already have, you want to get yourself a big roll of tickets that are double-sided so you can give one out and keep one. And what you would love to do is, you're going to play a little game. Here's where I play the game in my skincare class or appointment. I play the game between finishing up the skincare and the um, foundation primer, and I let the primer dry before foundation and concealer. It's just a nice spread. They've got the primer on their face. I'm saying, you know, why it dries? We're going to play a fun game. This is how we're going to do a, a wonderful game tonight. You get to ask me questions about what I do in Mary Kay related to our marketing plan, and you're going to get a ticket for every question you ask me. Now, a lot of times at this point, you're just looking at me, right? And you're like, ah, who's going to ask me a question? Here's how you get them to start talking. Say, the first person who asks me a question is going to get five tickets, and there's a bonus question, ladies. Anybody who asks the bonus question is going to get five tickets. So, who would like to be the first? And somebody's hand always goes up. And what you're looking for is getting them to ask you questions. What does it cost to get started? How do we make our money? How do you earn a free car? Now, what do you do if there's not a whole lot of questions being asked? Well, you're going to look at somebody you know her name and go, oh, Jennifer, that's a great question. And Jennifer's going to give you this look like, what? I didn't ask a question. And you're going to say, what about tax benefits? So I'm going to hand Jennifer a ticket and bring up information about the marketing plan that I want to share that nobody asked a question on, right? So for example, somebody give me a question just so you guys can hear how it works. So, okay, who would like to earn a ticket? Ask me a question. Anybody? First person, raise your hand, gets five tickets. Jenny. Um, tell me about the tax break. Okay, wonderful. So in Mary Kay, because you own your own business, it's a tax break. You actually get to write off a portion of your mortgage, your cell phone, your internet. The expenses you normally have to live, a portion of those are now a tax break. Isn't that exciting? Yes. And then if you decide you're going to go visit your girlfriend in a different state, bring your starter kit with you, pamper her, you can bring a little bit of that trip off too. Yeah. So I have a lot of women who are in Mary Kay because of the tax benefit that you get. So thank you for asking that great question. Who else has a question? Go ahead, y'all. got to play with me here. Oh. Jennifer. How much do you make? I love that question. We have three avenues of income. Our first avenue is we make 50% of what we sell. So we buy from Mary Kay, which is the wholesaler, and we're the retailers. So we're like our little store, and we make 50%. My highest sales weekend was over $3,000. I held three parties. So on Monday, I put $1,500 profit in my account. How exciting is that? That's our first avenue. Second avenue is earning the use of a free car. Mary Kay gives away free cars. You can earn a free car, and as fast as you want, they pay tax, tag, title, and 85% of your car insurance. And if you don't need a new car, guess what? You get cash instead of $375 a month. 
Anybody here get excited to go to the dealership, not have a credit check, not have to worry about haggling on a price, but to just pick up a free car? Anybody? Awesome. Well, the third avenue of income is by sharing this incredible opportunity. What I love about Mary Kay is we like to pass it on. And if you decide you want to do this great business and you build a team, you get paid anywhere between 4 and up to 13% as a consultant on, on your team. As a sales director, it's 23 to 36%. So last month, my commission check was almost $15,000. My highest check's been over 30. What you would all say, because you don't have a $31,000 paycheck, you can say, my sales director's highest check was over $31,000. Well, before I had a big girl paycheck, that's what I used to say, what my sales director's check was. That's pretty exciting. Do you think you got people's attention hearing that? Great question. So those are three hours of income. Thanks for asking that, Jennifer. Who else had a question? Yes. How much time does it take? Oh, good question. Well, you know what? It's really no time commitment in Mary Kay. It's really what you want out of this company. So you can hold as little as one party a month or one party a week. It's totally up to you. I personally, as a sales director, hold three parties a week and make some phone calls during the week to customers. And I run a great success meeting on Thursday nights. So I do part-time about 25 hours a week. But it's up to you on how much or little you want to do. Good question. Anybody else? Yes, Lauren? If we don't have a boss, what if I have questions? Ah, oh, well, you're talking to the right person. I'm your sales director. Or if you're not the sales director, you'll say, we have a wonderful director who's going to help you with all your questions. And the great thing is you can do online training. And your starter kit, if you decide to join Mary Kay, there's great training material in the kit as well. But I'm also, I'd be your recruiter. I'd be glad to help you also. So there's always somebody there to help you. Good question. We'll take one more. Yes? How much does it cost? Ah, bingo! Bonus question! Woohoo! That's a bonus question. Five tickets. Now, do not fall off your chairs because it costs a whole lot to get started here. Me a whole lot, don't fall off. I'm just kidding, it's 100 bucks. For 100 bucks, you get a beautiful showcase that has over $400 worth of retail product in it, all your training material, and this gorgeous, beautiful bag. And I show the bag. Plus, there's something else that comes in this box, ladies. You want to know what comes in this box? Me. That's right. I come in your box. I do your first party for you. And I would love to help you get this business started. So, for $100, I paid $100 nine years ago to get my business started. And guess what? It turned into $197,000 on my 1099 last year. Can you imagine that? So, thank you for that. That'll be our last question. You know, if you heard something here that kind of tugged at your heart, or you thought, wow, I don't know if I could sell Mary Kay, but I'd sure like to make some big girl money, and I'd sure like to earn a free car, talk to me at the end. I'd be happy to give you some information. And if any of you all are fast decision makers here, guess what? For 100 bucks, we get you started today. Actually, Mary Kay put the starter kit on sale. It's only $75. $75 gets you started. So we'll talk at the end, and then I stop. That you said? Now, first, you may not know all the answers, and you're probably worried, oh, what if somebody asks a question I don't know? You can say, that's a good question. I don't know the answer, but I'll find out for you. The only way you're going to learn is by asking questions. So they might ask you, someone asked me one time, how many men are in Mary Kay? Well, I don't know the answer. I still don't know the answer to that. Not many. There are a few. It's mainly women. But there are a couple, and actually, our queen of sales was actually a king. He was the number one in sales in our division. And he sold the most product out of all the women in there. He was the number one. He was crowned king, and he had a crown on his head. Mm -hmm. So, but it was true. I didn't know the answer to that. It, it's true. Yeah. So you might not know the answer to all the questions, and it's totally okay. What's that? What year was that? Last year. Just last year. He might be the queen and king again. He is yeah. rock and rolling he's, this year. He, he's not messing around. Yeah. And he's doing great. Um, okay, so that is the first game. That's how I was raised in Mary Kay doing, so that's what I know, that's what I love. I'm passionate about sharing the opportunity that way. If that doesn't work for you, it's okay. You can also share it by, I gave everybody this little copy of Mrs. Cab. I'm going to go through how you do this real quick as well. And here's how this works. Is This is called the first game. I call it the first game. So everybody here have a purse? And people will run to the car and get a purse if they don't have one. They'll borrow <laughs> someone's purse if they don't have one. They'll get a purse. You're going to pull out your purse, and here's what we're going to do. Now, they don't have a copy of the sheet, by the way. Only you have a copy of the sheet so that you can see the answers. You're going to go, and you're going to say, okay, great. I'm going to say a letter. The first person to pull that item out of their purse that starts with that letter and says Mary Kay is going to get a ticket. Okay, but you have to say Mary Kay. You can't say what the item is. But a lot of times people will say brush or whatever. That is a Mary Kay. All right, we're going to do this real quick so you guys know how this works. Okay, ready? And. Money. 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 Bingo. Mary Kay. Okay, fair. you got you to gotta say Mary Kay. <laughs> so, see? And it happens every time. So, they don't get a ticket first. It just makes it fun. Yeah. Then you give a ticket and you say, great. M stands for the money we make in Mary Kay. We make 50% of what we sell, which is great. Plus, we also make a team building commission if you decide to join a team. And that's why I talk about my highest sales week. You may talk about your highest sales facial. Whatever your highest, you just had two appointments this last week, right? So, you did camp for two faces, sold 300, I'm sorry, 60. 25. Great, 25. Okay, great. You can say, and then
and that took you what, hour and a half to do two faces maybe? Okay, hour and a half, two hours, let's say two hours. You say, I just had two pampering sessions last week, just hold two faces. I sold over $300, that was $150 profit in two hours worth of work. Not too bad, but you see how I made that sound exciting? Mm -hmm. It's true, right? Mm -hmm. And I built two great customers, I've been my customers for life. Okay, you guys ready? R. Okay. Yay, perfect. <laughs> and usually they pull out a receipt. I have a brain. <laughs> brain <laughs> brain <laughs> and you said you say R stands for the recognition. You know what in Mary Kay we get lots of recognition. You just sell a lipstick and somebody will be clapping for you. And not only that, but you know, we as women, we are would love to be praised to success. And Mary Kay, we believe that. So no matter what you're doing, we're gonna help you succeed and you're gonna get great great recognition. Talk about the meeting. We have this wonderful success meeting where you can be queen of sales and it's so fun to have a crown on your head. Women would love to miss America. Women would love, I mean, y'all are wearing the crown still on your head at the meeting, right? Doesn't it feel good? <laughs> Let's be real. When you can hear, don't you want to be a queen? <clears throat> you know, when you're doing count up, and you're looking around to see who else is counting up, right? Who else is standing up? Who's going to win that crown on your head? It feels so good. If more companies would recognize their women or employees and really make them feel appreciated, they'd be, you'd be amazed at how work production would go up. It would truly go up because we're always told we're doing wrong, but not so much what we're doing right. It makes a huge difference. So you talk about the great recognition. You guys ready? Next letter, S. Right Yay! Mm -hmm. And they tell you what they have. And you'll be surprised what some of them pull out their purse, too. Oh, Sometimes yes. it's a little scary. Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwich. Be surprised. I've had some funny things come out of people's purse. And you would say, great. S stands for the self-confidence, the personal growth you'll get in Mary Kay. You know, when I came in Mary Kay, I was more on the shy side. I couldn't stand in front of a big group of women and teach a class. But because of building this business, it had me grow as a woman in my confidence. And now I can stand up here and do this same care class. And I love this business. And you know what? I haven't met a shy person yet who tells me I love being shy. So if you're a little shy, Mary Kay may help you with some personal growth. You're going to need a lot of new girlfriends and grow, grow yourself as well. Okay, you ready? C. Mary Kay. Yay, good. C stands for the cars we earn in Mary Kay. Well, Mary Kay gives away the use of a free car. They pay tax, tag, title, and 85% of your car insurance. I'm currently driving my seventh free car. Now, y'all, some of you are driving free cars, but a lot of you aren't. You can say, I'm about ready to go on target for my free car. Because everybody in this room, just from making the decision, is about ready to go on target. People don't know what a red jacket is. People don't know what a sales director is. People know what a free car is. Wouldn't you guys all agree? So say, how many of y'all want to earn the use of a free car? Raise your hand real high. Okay, great. So you have my permission and you can say, I'm about to go on target for my free car. As long as you're doing faces and sharing the marketing plan, you are about to go on target for your free car, right? Mm -hmm. You're not lying, you are about to go on target, you just gotta do the work to get there. So talk about the cars and you can tell them about the three cars and, um, or you can say you can take the cash at 375 a month instead. Alrighty, ready for next letter? And really, they're so worried about what the next thing is you're gonna say about the letter of their purse. It takes the focus off of you and puts it on their purse. Seriously, you go, okay, ready? It does, because there are people are competitive. A. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. A stands for advancement in Mary Kay. The great news is in Mary Kay is that you, you are your own boss, and you also get to advance yourself whenever you want. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you, oh, you did a great job this week, you get a promotion. You can promote yourself. I love that about this business. All right, I've got the last one. Are you guys ready? Let's see who's going to win this last ticket. It's B. Mary Kay. Bingo, Mary Kay. And so um, B stands for being your own boss. I love the fact that I am my own boss. I can tell myself when I want to work and when I want to take off. So, and this is why I talk about the hour requirements. There are no hour requirements. There are no sales quotas. You only have to do $200 order with the company once a year to stay a beauty consultant and have your number. That's it, just $200. So it's not like you're committing to a whole lot, but boy, it can certainly change your life and being your own boss. I'm so glad that nine years ago I signed up and took a chance on myself and said I'm ready to be my own boss, let me give it a try. And that's it again. See how easy it is? You're just putting out the marketing plan, the facts out there. Questions? Yeah, just real quick. Um, at what point would you talk about like how much the starter kit is? Like how do you get them interested in that? You know what I mean? Because a lot of times like they might, and as soon as you mentioned, oh it's a hundred, or in this case 75, and like, oh, I want to sign up. You know what right. I mean? So at the end of the game, of the, the Mrs. I always make sure that somebody, that's the bonus question. So if somebody doesn't ask it, I'll pick somebody to ask the question. You know, oh, great, Tanya, but how much does it cost to get started? Someone always asks that question, though. And this one, I would make the very last thing. And by the way, it's only $100 to get started with Mary Kay. If you decide this is something you'd like to get started with, guess what? And I would show, show your bag. Make sure your bag looks all put together. Don't have your bag having stuff all <laughs> hanging out. You want it to look really nice, new, 
and clean and crisp. We don't want stuff all over the you know, hanging out of it. But if you show this bag, women will sign up just to get this bag. Okay, this bag is hot. I love this bag. So I carry a new bag all the time. Okay, this bag is so cute. Okay, this bag is full of all this great stuff. And I say, the greatness is on sale for $75 today. Now here's how I am every marketing game I do or Mrs. Cam. I say for those of you who are a fast decision maker, for those of you who are a fast decision maker and you say, hey, for 100 bucks, for $75, I don't know if I'm gonna be any good, but I like a lot of things that you said. If you're willing to teach me, I'm coachable. If you're willing to train me, I'll do what you tell me to do. I'm ready to make some extra money. And you sign today. I offer a signing bonus. You do not have to offer a signing bonus. I personally offer the black roll-up bag. That bag's hot, people love it. You can offer a free set hand. You don't have to offer something, but I like to dangle something in front of fast decision makers because you're gonna learn next week we're gonna talk about personalities. D or um, D and I personalities are fast decision makers. And if there's something dangling in front of their face, they're gonna go, I'll sign, I'll do it, I'll do it, right? Because it's not such a big deal for them. S's and C's, people have to process things that need to be layered, like with Tanya, might take a bunch of layering, which is totally fine. She's not gonna sign for a free roll-up bag, would not have signed Tanya. I signed myself up, even when my best friend told me not to, because I was like, hey, 100 bucks, why not get started? Now, if that director would have dangled something in front of my face, she'd probably got me signing up in the middle of the class. <laughs> okay? But that's a personal choice. That's not something you have to do. But I personally think, hey, giving away a black roll-up bag for $15 gets her excited. She, I mean, it's empty. I'm not giving her product in it. It's empty, but she's excited to get it filled up and get things going. But I love to end it saying, if you're a fast decision maker, if you heard something you kind of need to sleep on it overnight, We'll talk at the end, I'll give you some information. Any questions on those two games? Okay, here's how you transition from that. And at that point, you're gonna pass out this little think pick pink slip. You can print them out on pink paper so they don't get lost if you like. What you're gonna do now is say, okay, great. Got all the tickets, we're gonna do a drawing from that, but I have a special gift I'm gonna give away for this drawing. This is just because I wanna know what you think. This is gonna help me with my training. If you could be so sweet and fill this out. Now you're gonna walk them through it. So you're gonna say, you should already have your, your name on here. Don't have them write your name. You should write your name on there. Question, Lisa? I hate to do this, but I wanted to piggyback off of what you just said yeah. about the signing bonus. Yeah. If they sign and they get their roll-up bag, what happens at the end when you close them and they want to make the purchase? Well, if they're signing a beauty agreement, I'm not selling them. If somebody's going to sign up, and Tanya's going to talk about that, if somebody's going to sign up that night, I mean, like physically sign their beauty agreement online or on a piece of paper, I'm not going to sell to them. Because in my mind, this is just a personal <coughs> preference, and this is just me. I feel like if you're just buying your starter kit, you should get things at cost. You should get things when you do your first order at cost versus buying me. Now, if she wants to purchase that day and take it home and think about it, that's different. Then obviously, she'll take her product home and pay for it, and then I talk to her the next day. If she decides to sign up tomorrow, well, that's not my problem. I mean, that sounds bad, not my problem, but you know what I mean. But if they sign that day, I'm not gonna have it. That's, you certainly could. It's not that it's wrong to, but I feel like they just sign and join my team. Yeah my opinion. Um, okay, so you're going to have them put their name or phone number. Number one, what impressed you most? What fact did you hear today that impressed you most? You should write that down. Number two, after hearing the information about our company, please check the box that best describes you. So if you can be so sweet and check one of these. Um, first box, it sounds really good. I have nothing to lose. Let's get started. Number two, I'd like some more information. I'll listen to a hotline or watch a little uh, video and, and follow up with you in a couple of days. Number three, invite me to your next event. I'm intrigued. Number four, definitely not. I don't need any extra money and I'm not into discounts. So if you can just be so sweet, fill out a completed form. I'm going to go ahead and collect those and do a draw one. Now, what do I draw for? And then Tanya's going to take over. These cute little bags you can order from Mary Kay. They, they probably look a little different now because it's changed the look. But they're little bags inside of here. This is so cheap but so fun. I give away, which are 50 cents. Hand cream. Mary Kay's little tube of hand cream. That's it. But look at the presentation of this gift. How's that look? And you don't have to use Mary Kay bags. You can go to the dollar store and put some cute tissue paper. Make them look good. That's one gift. Second gift is our wonderful glamour look card. They don't have this at their first appointment. This is a wonderful glamour look. How exciting is that? They can take this home and play with it. That's the two little gifts. So it costs you like next to nothing. A, you know, 50 cents to a dollar a gift to give away, but those are the gifts that I give away. You can give away what you want, but we want to be cost effective not to have you give away so much free stuff. So these two little things are going to be my gifts that I'm going to give away for the drawing, because I'm going to do two separate drawings. One are going to be for all the tickets that I've done for okay. referrals and for the ticket marketing game or Mrs. Cab game, okay. and then I'm going to do one drawing for the pink slips that you're going to get. Two separate drawings. Okay. So that's why you want to keep your gifts kind of, you know, 
cost friendly and not too expensive. Any questions on the gifts? You can give away, you can have discontinued product, you can do PCP gifts, but these cost like 50 cents a gift. Yeah, so that's why I do these, because they're 50 cents a gift. And who doesn't like that hand cream? I mean, a hand cream in your purse is awesome. Everybody loves you one of those hand cream samples. Would you suggest doing, because I give away the hand creams for the goodie bag when they close, mm -hmm. with the mint and the mm -hmm. business cards, so I was thinking if it would be kind of redundant to give the same gift. Yeah, it probably would be. Um, but I usually do the mint list. <coughs> Yeah, whatever works for you that you find. You know, it's a cute little thing. It's the satin hand packet. The fragrance for you. you get all That's three true. in one That's packet. That's a great idea. You can get those. They're very cost effective. That's true. Do the satin hands packet or just do the glamour look card. I mean, think about it. The, our goal is to get people back in our space to book a second look or a, to book a second appointment. But a lot of times they don't. So they get to take this little look card home and they can play with it and sample with it, have fun with it. But just put it, make it, you can put like a little hot pink bow around it and make it look good. Like if you didn't have these little bags, you know how you can go to Michael's and for a dollar you can buy those little ribbons? What are those ribbons? You know what I'm talking about. What are they called? You know, just ribbon. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Curling, Curling ribbon. Just make it look cute. We won't be offended by that. We usually end at 8.30, but yeah. we just knew we couldn't cram it all in in the short time that we had, but we think it's really important information for you guys to go over with you guys. Okay, so um, have you ever, how many people in here have ever felt uncomfortable at the individual close at the end when you get to the recruiting part? You're like, you want to share, you don't know what to say, you don't know how she's feeling. She sat there like this with a scowl on her face the whole party, and you're like, oh, I'm not asking her, okay? All right, so you get there, and you're nervous. So you get there, and you're nervous. Okay, what I love about the Think Pink is when you hand these out, and then you collect them all, and you do the drawing, you've got them, right? You've got them. When you come to that part in your closing, when you're sitting down with the customer and you're at the individual close, this gives you an advantage right here. You're not vulnerable anymore. You <coughs> know what she's thinking, okay? She's heard your information, she's heard the presentation, and you're gonna know whether she's here, here, or here already. So you get to that part in your individual close and you have your think pink sheet out, and the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look at it um, so when you sit down with her, the first thing that I want to back up, the first thing that you do when someone sits down with you at an individual close is you don't go right into, so did you have fun? And how's your face feel? And try to get the sale. The first thing you want to do is take 20 to 30 seconds to get to know her a little bit more. Okay, so to develop a little bit more relationship with her. So you're sitting there one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just by yourself. You just want to ask her, you know, you got to know me a little bit at the party. I heard a little bit about you, but tell me a little bit more about yourself, Renee. And then she's going to tell you a couple things. And then just listen to her. She might tell you a lot. It's like when you're in the hairdresser's chair, you tell her things that you're surprised that you're, that you're saying, right? Am I the only one that does that? <laughs> when I hear other people, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but, so she might tell you things and you, and you can just listen politely and nod your head or whatever it is, but get to know her a little bit. What she says is going to tell you a lot about her and about her personality, okay? So listen for key things about her. If she starts to talk immediately about her family and her kids, you know what that means. We're going to do personality training next week. This isn't personality training. But if she talks immediately about her job and her latest accomplishment at her job, you're going to, you're going to know a little bit more about her that way. But so once you've gone through the sale and you've booked the second appointment, you're going to take the Think Peak sheet and you're going to look at it. And this is going to just be golden for you because you've got this. And if she's checked off the box that sounds, this sounds really good, I have nothing to lose, you're not going to say to her, do you have any questions? No. You're going to say, oh, great. Well, is there any reason we can't get you started today? She's already checked the box. Okay, if she has a question, she's going to ask you. But go right into closing the deal because, and you know what, get the pen out, <laughs> get the iPad out, whatever it is you need to do. Um, one of the national sales directors, I remember, she would just take at the end of an interview and she would just slide the agreement across and say, <laughs> and here's the agreement and the pen, is there any reason we can't get you started today? And she would put it right in front of them. And she said people would just pick up the pen and sign. And they would just, <laughs> yeah, so just, just go right for it. She's ready. She's checked the box. Number two, I would like some more information. I'll listen to a hotline, watch a video, follow up with you in a few days. What you're going to do here is 
you're going to set up the interview. And what I like to do is, you know, just say, great, I see you want some more information. Well, it just so happens that I'm testing. I'm, uh, I have a new, we have a new marketing tool. And I'm looking for a test panel of women to view this new marketing video. And I'd love to get your opinion on it. This is what I'm saying right now on the Roya Mad on the um, Leah Lachlan video. I think when I try to go back and view the video again, or it was like made private, so. Um, oh. Hmm. Yeah. And I just no. got a text from a customer saying she couldn't view it either. Exactly, and so I went back because people were telling me, and it's made private. So. Okay. Well, we'll see what's going on with that. Hmm. Not sure. But anyways, but thank you. No, but thank you for that, because we'll check into that. Um, okay, so whatever it is, though, you can say we have a new marketing um, tool, and I need, I'm doing a test panel of women to give me their opinion on it. And go right into getting um, the interview set up, okay? You've got your packet. You give it to her. You um, tell her you're going to text her the video, whatever it is. And then I say, is there any reason why I couldn't, you know, today is Thursday. Um, would Friday or Saturday be better for me to follow up with you? I don't go into Sunday. I usually look for two days mm -hmm. um, within 48 hours. Don't say, so what works for you? When can we talk? It's just like the skill of booking that we do, right? When we book an appointment, we say this day or that day, morning or afternoon, evening. Offer a choice. Okay, so would Friday or Saturday be better for you? Saturday's good for you? Okay, would the morning or early afternoon? Early afternoon, great. Around 1? Perfect. So I'm going to give you a call Saturday at 1. So go right into booking that appointment and setting that up. <coughs> if you're going to meet her for a coffee, it's the same technique. Okay, you could just offer it. And if you watch Roya, that video, she has a great way of just kind of booking the appointment, the face-to-face -face appointment. The third one is invite me to the next event. I am intrigued. We get this a lot. You know, well, maybe, you know. But when they check that box off, what I love about this form is that you're going to take these home, and if they check that box, now I'm going to try to book her anyways, but if, you, if they check this box, you can separate these slips into categories, not interested, invite me to an event, I'm taking information, sign me up. Put them into piles, and the next time we have a, an event, which by the way is every Thursday night, we have an event here every Thursday night. You're at it right now. <laughs> this event. But we do have special events, too. You've got a whole stack of leads. You've got 30 women over the past two months that have told you to invite me to an event. What are you going to do? You're going to pick up your pile, and you're going to call them. You've got that pile ready waiting for you, okay? So this one right here, invite me to the next event. I'm intrigued. Same thing. Great. I will definitely um, give you a call, send you an invitation for our next event. But I have a question for you. I'm testing a new um, marketing tool this week, and I need to have women view it and give me their opinion. Is there any reason why you couldn't help me with that? Could you watch the video and give me your opinion? What's she going to say? Sure. That's fine. And then all you've done is she's getting more information. She's getting another viewpoint. Maybe something she heard from you she didn't quite connect with, but maybe she's going to hear something in the video that she can. So get that Get that marketing information in her hand and set up the appointment to follow up with her. The last one is definitely not, I don't need any money and I'm not into discounts. And people will check that. And I always just reassure them and say, great, thank you, thank you for your honesty. And I just want you to know, I love my consultants, but I really love my customers. And this is what I enjoy so much about my business is helping women to feel good and look beautiful. So I'm going to take great care of you. So there's no like uncomfortable, you know, air about you or anything like that. You know where she stands. She knows where you stand. That you're going to be her consultant. Anybody have questions about that? Is this fabulous or what? Yeah. It's going to help you to take those and separate them, and then you're going to have all those leads that you know you can call for the next event. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a national. I'm all over that. <laughs> Well, as soon as we all become directors and she becomes a national, she'll do it. Oh, I'm sure he could. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is to start tracking and how, okay, anyone feel a little bit like flustered? You got paper, you don't know what you're doing with it. 
Okay, Jen always out. used to just tell me, get a spiral notebook, but to this day, this is the only spiral notebook I use right here, okay? And this is my tracking, my monthly tracking. We started doing this a while ago, and I love this. So get, like, two or three of these from Giant. This one is from Giant, okay? <laughs> get two or three of these from Giant, wherever there is dollar. It's the cheapest way you can track anything, okay? You start your month, you open it up, and you've got... Okay, so this is my... This is not completely filled in yet, but this is April, okay? So I open it up, and I put my tracking sheet here for April, okay? So I've started filling it out. It isn't completed, but here's April. So I've got my, my um, metal sheet that we're going to use to fill out our faces and our interviews. What you do next is, so I have two because I'm planning to do 50 faces. Okay, so I put two in. Next thing you're going to do... Right after that April sheet is this is going to be where you're going to track your interviews. Okay, right after. You're going to use these papers to track your interviews right after your tracking sheet. So if you go back to February, I've got my February, my February and my March there. And then the interviews on the pages following, okay? But I just write down anybody that I give a packet to, even if they don't answer the phone. <laughs> okay, so this girl, Kelly... Uh, I wrote a couple notes about her. She never followed up with me. She never did the interview. But this girl, Christina, she did. She's uh, on my list. Okay? <laughs> but she did. So you're going to use this to just write notes about your interviews and keep track of it. I have a whole one, and I couldn't find it, but I have it at home from last year in DIQ and all last year. <coughs> and it's full of just people and interviews and things I did with my team. And So you always have that. You can go back and reference it when you need to. Someone was kind of a maybe last year you can go back and, and go back to that person this year mm -hmm. and follow up with them and say, hey, you know, we've got the starter kit on sale this month. It'd be a great time for you to start your business. Have you given it a thought at, at all? <coughs> Have you, has it crossed your mind at all? So this is a great way to track your interviews. I love this. And it's really, really simple. Oh, and you can also put, well, these are the old pink slips. Just staple it right in the book. Just staple the pink slip right in if you want to. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, how to follow up and how to do the interview. So you've shared the marketing information with her and you're going to call her and you're going to spend some time following up with her um, about the information she listened to. All right, so the old way of doing it is not the new way of doing it. We're out with the old and in with the new. So we're going to talk about how to do a follow-up call after, you, after they've listened. Most people are going to need layering. Most people are not going to sign on the spot. There are going to be some that do, and that's why you asked the question that Jen did during the party, is you say, if you're a fast decision maker, you know, you can get started tonight for $100. Now, $75. But that's what you're going to do. The fast decision makers are going to get on it and going to get started. But who signed on the spot in here? Okay, we've got quite a few eyes in here. <laughs> All right, so, but most people, I would say 80% of people are going to need layering. I would say about 80%. So the reason why you need to do this is I really am good with layering people, and I do layer people, and I go back to people. And this is a great tool to do that with. So when you get to the phone call and you're giving her a call, um, we're always going to remember that when you phone someone to talk to them about the business, it is not time for you to talk and tell her all about yourself. It's time for her to talk. And how you become a really great, strong recruiter is by asking questions and giving her time to respond. Okay? Let the woman talk. <laughs> Let her talk. She needs to tell you things so you understand what her sweet spot is. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear and listen for the sweet spot. What is it that Mary Kay is going to make a difference in her life? What is it? You have to listen in order to discover that. You can't be talking about yourself and what you did in Mary Kay. It is not time for you to talk all about your accolades and what you've done and all that stuff. It's not time for that. It's time for you to listen to her. Okay, so asking really key questions is really important. But what kind of questions should you ask? Because you want to get to know her and you want um, to listen. So you want to ask open-ended questions. The first thing you're going to ask her is, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And if she pauses, 
and she says, well, what do you want to know? You know what she is. She's probably a C. But just listen to her. And what you're going to listen for is you're going to listen for an overall theme in her, in her voice. Is she a victim or is she a um, victorious person? Okay? If she tells you her sad story and how miserable her life is and things like that, she, you know, she could be a good consultant, but right now it's not looking like that. But, you know, you want to listen for something in her voice that has passion. All right? Just listen to her and listen to what she says about herself. Then ask her questions. I love this question because I think this really helps you to understand her. Tell me what brings you joy in your life. So this girl, Christina, that I just interviewed last week, who um, is a young professional in um, Virginia, newly married, fairly young, you know, mid-20s. Um, you know, I didn't think she, I, at first I thought, how would, I don't know what she would be interested in Mary Kay about, but as I listened, I found out more about why she would be interested. Okay? She told me about Joy, that um, spending time with her husband and doing activities with her husband because they're newly married. That's something that brings her joy right now. Other people are going to say that aren't married, they're going to say spending time with their friends, you know, maybe traveling with their girlfriends. Um, moms quite possibly say they're children. Maybe they don't. <laughs> Your children don't bring them joy. Shopping, you know, what, what brings you joy? What puts a big smile on your face? What is it? Listen to her answer. It's going to tell her you what she's passionate about. Tell me about a time in your life. This is another really great question. We're going to give this to you. Don't worry. But we want you to listen right now. Tell me about a time in your life that you were most <coughs> proud of yourself. When you ask these questions, ask them like you're engaging her. Don't just say, okay, well, Lisa, so tell me about a time when you were proud of yourself. So, Lisa. Now that you're starting to be me. <laughs> so, Lisa. <laughs> Tell me about a time in your life that you felt really proud of yourself. Do you hear the difference in how you say it? When in your life... Go ahead. You should. Like, tell her. What helps her work? Yeah. When I first saw my child, my, my, my children, I was the most proud. And I whined. And stopped. You made me cry. And you don't make it about yourself, but we're having a moment. Right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's really easy to go down the road of starting to talk about yourself, but don't. It's time to focus on her and pour into her. Okay? You can make a quick comment, but it's not time to talk about yourself. Okay. And I, I love that. So what, and then you can even ask her to elaborate more. If she said, like, this gal, Christina... Um, she was a swimmer in college, and she swam on a team. And she said, wow, I was so proud when our team won and we all worked together. That told me she's a big team player. And I said, what about that did you love the most? Like about?" And she said, just being, like, you could just feel the energy from each other. Okay, so you're asking open-ended questions. These questions are good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love them. So the next one tells you if she has vision for herself. If you could fast forward a year from now, Jane, if you could take your life and just press the fast forward and jump a year ahead, if you had all the time and all the resources available to you, what dream would you love to be living a year? Full-time Mary Kay. Oh, I love that, Jane. That is so exciting. Tell me more about that. So you just <laughs> asked her that question. She's going to tell you, pay off debt. Listen for her sweet spot. Pay off debt. Spend more time with my kids. Travel the world. Buy a house. What dream would you like to be living? Not working for my terrible boss. Whatever it is, listen for that. Listen to what's going to make this business real to her and help her to make that happen. I know what mine was when I started, was to be financially free and spend time with my children. Okay, so... That one you'll hear a lot from moms. 
but listen, because it might be different. Okay, this uh, gal that I talked to last week, hers is um, to actually, she, she, talking to her, I found out she actually really doesn't like her job. At first, it sounded like she did, and then she said to me, you know, sometimes I, I love my job, she said, but sometimes I do it, I think I do it just because of the outcomes from it and the income that I make. And she told me that after about 10 minutes into the conversation. At first, I thought she loved her job. But then it came out eventually that she was questioning whether she really liked it. Mm -hmm. She was just doing it for the money. So these are the things you hear. Okay, so now you're going to talk briefly about how the marketing plan and Mary Kay. We love that. <laughs> we love that. So you're going to go back to kind of hit on a little bit with how, um, you know, this business could work for her in her life. Just go back to what she mentioned at her sweet spot. Go back to that. Tell her about someone that you know that has a similar situation to her. Okay, like if it's um, someone like Jen who worked tons of hours in D.C., 50, 60 hours. Reference somebody that you know that has a story similar to hers. And in order to know those, you just have to listen. Listen to people's stories. Okay? Listen to the stories you hear here. Listen to the stories when you go to events and use those stories to inspire her also in her dreams. Okay, the next ones I go through kind of quickly and I ask her because I really want to get to know her the most at the beginning and then I say, so um, what qualities do you think that you have or do you know that you have that would make you a great <coughs> asset to Mary Kay? What, what do you have? And she's gonna say, well, I like people, I'm flexible, I'm a really hard worker, let her talk. Don't interrupt her. Just let her talk. And what she's done, say, great. That, those, all of those sound really great, like you would be a great consultant. So what do you think would be the worst thing that could happen if you gave this a try? <laughs> What's the worst thing that could happen? Failure. I've, I've heard that a lot. I've okay. heard a lot. Failure. You could fail. Failing. Okay. And if I say, if you said fail, I would say, let me ask you a question. If you try something and you just don't like it, would you consider that failing? No. Okay. If you tried something and you found that it just wasn't working for you, would you consider it failing? No. Okay. So probably not failing. Maybe just that you changed your mind or it wasn't something that you enjoyed. So I kind of nicely try to remind them that failing, there's not really a failure in this company. So, all right, so then go on. What was the best, what would be the best thing that could happen to you if you tried this? A free car. car. Woo, a free car, that's right. Anything else? Get out of your job. Get out of your job. Get out of your job. Wow, can you just imagine that for a second? <laughs> can you imagine that? If you got to set your own schedule and have the flexibility in your life that you really want, can you imagine that for a second? So just connect with her again and ask her that question. And then close the appointment. You're going to say, you know, I really appreciate you sitting here and giving me your feedback. And I love getting to know you more. And I just want to ask you, you know, is there any reason we couldn't get you started today? Just ask her. Just ask her, what is she going to say when you ask her that? No. Yes. yes or no, right? <clears throat> if she says yes, you have a new team member and she has a golden opportunity. If she says no, then you say, well, let me ask you a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, a 1 is I would never do this even if there's a homeless living in my car. Okay. <laughs> or 10 is, you know, obviously I want to get started today. 75 bucks. Where would you be on that scale? Because you want to kind of gauge her to hear where she is. If she's not an, if she's not a yes, then you're going to take her to the scale and you're going to say, so where would you be? The scale last week said she was a seven eight, which I was like, almost dropped her phone. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but um, so you want to ask her. If she says an eight, I always say, well, what questions could I answer for you to move you to a ten? What else is it that you need to hear? What more information do you need? She might say, well, I need to just, you know, I need to think about it a little bit more. Never push someone when they say, I do not push people when they say they need to think about it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I was a processor, 
And if Jen had to push me, I would have been out the door. Okay? So don't scare people off by stalking them and pressuring them to do weird things to join your team. Okay? So at that point, um, you can tell her about the, the pink dream test. And, you know, if you go to bed tonight and, um, you know, you're sleeping and you see pink sheep, ah, ah, <laughs> and you start thinking questions like, go through your head like, who could be my first customer? Or I wonder how I could work in my parties. Where you start seeing yourself, what I say to her is, if you start seeing yourself in the position, I want to just challenge you to give it a try. Because if she's visualizing herself doing it, she's already halfway there. She's just to the door. Really, she really is, if she's already visualizing that. So, and at that point, I would set up a follow-up time with her, just to follow up with her and see, you know, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow just to see if you're... You know, if you're, the decision, if you're good, you want to go ahead and get your business started, or do you still need a little bit more time? How does that sound? And just do that. So, that's how I do interviews now. The old way we used to do it was a little less about her, more about, I felt it was more about us a little bit more. We would tell them a lot of things about Mary Kate, we'd tell them a lot about us. But this one, I think, really uncovers layers to the woman and lets you get to know her more and find out what is going to make her passionate about the business. Okay, so who has questions? Because we're done. We're over time. So, anybody have a question? Yes. Um, following up with her after, if she still needs more time, do you think, what is an appropriate, so you said you'd follow, ask okay. her if you could follow up the next day. If she says, that's not good, or whatever, what's an okay. appropriate time span? Sure. How many times do you follow up? Okay, so with Christina, the girl I interviewed last week, um, who obviously is a very much a um, C, and I'll tell you why, because sh she set up the interview with me and said, I can call you Friday at 11.30. It was 11.31 and my phone rang. <laughs> she called me. Literally. I was like, okay. <laughs> she lives by the schedule. So... So, but when you, um, when you set up the time, you, I think you should just consider their personality. So I'm not going to follow up with her, like, because she said, well, you know, I think I might be ready, you know, sometime this year to get started. I'm like, mm-hmm. So I said, well, Christina, um, you know, I want to let you know that right now Mary Kay has a discount on the starter kit. It's only for the month of April. But I do want to let you know that because you get your starter kit for $75. And just let her know that you know you can get your starter kit, and we can start as slowly or as fast as fast as you want. But just throwing that out there so you have that information. And then she was like, "Oh, okay. So you said that's only for April? Literally, that's what she said to me. So I was like, "Yeah, it's just for April." So I have a time in my date book to follow up with her next week. Okay. So an I and a D, you probably want to follow up right away if they don't sign on the spot. I mean, like. <laughs> The next day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. So uh, I did my first party with a pink slip just a couple weeks ago, right. and I was really pleased with the way it worked. It was so much more comfortable for me to do the marketing conversation. And I had a girl who said, I'm intrigued. Invite me to your next event. Okay. She said, that's great. I'm going to these meetings on Thursday nights. Are you available on the 11th? She said, no, I'm going out of town. Well, the next event that I'm mm -hmm. going to be able to come to is May 2nd. And I feel like that's so far away. Okay. And I don't want to lose her. So I was like, oh, can you do a conversation on the phone, like do this marketing uh, conversation with my sales director and I. And she called me back. She said, oh my gosh, I just found out I have to move. My life is really busy right now. Can you call me in like three months? I'm like, okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I would just say we, we all get things like that. We have we all have the people that don't answer the phone. We have people that tell us that they can't that day something came up and they're too busy and we have people like the gal I interviewed. I'll be so, I'll be ready sometime this year. Like okay. Mm -hmm. You know, this year, what are you talking about? <laughs> Lots can happen in a year, you know? <laughs> um, but um, so we're all gonna get that kind of stuff. Um, but if they say they want to come to an event, I would still try I would still use the whole thing what I said about, you know, or I'm testing this new marketing tool. I still just love to get your opinion, see what you think. I had a gal who 
on a form at a party circled a one or two. This was years ago. She circled a one or two. Quietest person. Didn't talk during the class. The end of the party, I still, I had the form. It was a bigger form that back then, but I had the form. I, I looked at her and I thought, she's I'm interested. She's a one or two. I asked her anyways. She took the information. She listened to the marketing information. She signed up seven days later in the middle of moving into her brand new house, didn't even have her internet hooked up, mm -hmm. and came in qualified. Oh, wow. You just do not know. So, and to this day, she's still a married kid. So, just ask her. Just follow up with her on that marketing information. You know, so. Mm -hmm. What's the tip to getting people here? Because, you know, I'll, I, might, I, I get that all the time. Oh, I want to come to the next event. So, great, you ask them to do this. And then I'll try and invite them to the actual, like, big events. They say, oh, you know, they never want to come. Or they're, there's always an excuse. So, I try to, like... Uh, I guess we say not dodge it, you know what I mean? Work with mm -hmm. the uh, rejections. And I mean, say, oh, you can be lip gloss. And if I know that they're not interested, if they're not a lip gloss person, I give them like a little free eyeshadow or whatever, something that's not, that's cost effective okay. to me. And it's not getting them. Okay, so just so I understand your question, you're trying to understand how to get people here? Yeah, people okay. that say they want to come to the next event, but just don't. They don't put any effort into it. So how much effort do I really need to put into them? Well, well, That's how much that. effort? Do you, yeah. Yeah, how much effort do you think you should put into them? I have a tendency to put all of my effort. Like my husband just said, "Honey, you're spending way too much time on one person." Okay. Give up. And mm, okay. I'm a very husbands are wise. Yeah, I'm a very wholehearted person. So when I we when know I, that about you, Ashley. Yeah. So. But here's the, here's the thing about it is um, if that is the character of the woman before she signs. She's probably going to be the same after she signs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I think you already know what to do. Just, yeah. Just you do. Yeah. <laughs> and if I can interject just real quick. Here's the thing. If you don't want to forget about people, but you also be talking to enough people, then you're not worried right. about the one person's not returning your phone call. See, okay. Tanya took three meetings. For coffee, two coffees and inviting to an event. It was probably I don't know what the time frame was, a couple weeks, six weeks. but six weeks. But Tanya was <coughs> calling me back. She was communicating back yeah, to we me. Talked about that. Oh, you yeah, did. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. We talked. To right, talked to right. That. But she was, you know, reciprocating back to me. It was just, you know, she was taking her time. But I was hearing back from her. I'm interested, okay. but just not at this moment. So it's kind of like a back and forth. If somebody's ignoring you or dodging, you know, it's not that someone says, oh, I can't come this week. It doesn't mean that they're dodging. It means life yeah. happens. Yeah. I mean, we all have life happens. And I'm somebody who signed her beauty agreement for six months, did not talk to my director, told my recruiter to take my kit back. Forget yeah. it. I'm not doing Mary Kay. I don't know why I got into this. Okay. I'm a pretty good person in Mary Kay, right? <laughs> so, but if you're only focusing on one person or two people, you're all like, oh, my guest isn't coming. So invite five guests to get one to show. Work with the numbers and you'll never feel it. So don't forget, that's where the tracking book, that's a lifesaver, wherever your tracking finder is. Yeah. And I live by my tracking spiral notebook. Everybody get one. I don't even get a fancy one if you want. But just get a spiral notebook and track because if you're doing enough interviews and sharing enough marketing plans, you have a big event coming up, go back three, four, five months and go, oh, Kelly, that's right. I haven't talked to Kelly in three months. Let me pop her a quick text. You never know. That might be the time in her life where she's ready to come. Okay. So it's not that women make excuses. It's that they are busy. And women don't see the big picture of Mary Kay yet. It's, we know how amazing Mary Kay is. But they don't necessarily see the inside. I had signed my beauty agreement and still thought, she's just selling some stupid lipstick. And I signed my agreement and came in like that. Right. Like I was like, Come Because in you're it. a processor and you process it where I'm impulsive. Yeah. So I'd rather layer people and take some time recruiting them and get myself a tanny hand shoe than get myself somebody who just signs and ignores like me for six months. Now I came back in, but you know what? My girlfriend didn't give up on me. She invited me to hear a national speak. She invited me to hear a national speak. That's what got me. It took me hearing a national sales director, <laughs> our national sales director, who is making fifty some thousand dollars a month for get my attention. I came in pants. I think I came in jeans to an event, and she was like, "You're a consultant." I'm like, "No, I'm not." Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was not coming as a consultant. I was coming to be her guest because they were giving away something for free. I was like, "Fine, I'll be your guest." Wow. Okay. <laughs> Truth. Okay, but but it's the truth though. <laughs> okay, but Dawn didn't give up on me. She would always sweetly invite me. And your rest, your good friend can do that to you. But I had to see the big picture of Mary Kay. Dawn wasn't going to get me to do Mary Kay. My director probably would never gotten me to do Mary Kay. But a national got me to do Mary Kay big time. Because I here's here's my personality. If I do it small, I'm bored. I'm quitting. 
Yeah. You, you, if I did not earn my pink Cadillac in six months, I probably would have quit because I'm the type of person, if I do something, I got to do it big and I got to do it right and I need it fast. Yeah. That's my personality. That's not Tanya. That's not Carolyn's. That's me. So, you know, if you're bored and you're like, am I in or am I out? Then jump in with both feet and make this business work and make it work quick and fast because then you get, you cross the line. Man, it's exciting and big things happen. So, the reason I share that with you is don't give up on people, but don't hound people. But if you're seeing enough people and have enough people market plans, you're not worried about the ones that can't make us. It, you just won't you just won't worry about them. They'll just be a name in your notebook that you follow back up with later. If you haven't done 15 interviews in a month, don't expect to, you know, get two to three team members. Because it's, it's, it's the numbers. You yeah. have to do more. It is. And here's the thing about the meetings is don't call them a meeting. Yeah. Because people, business boring. meetings are boring. No yeah, like that's like this. You know, like, that's just not fun. So, that's just, you know, come to our success tonight. Come to our fun event. If you really, really, she's somebody sharp you want on your team, we'll pick her up. Offer to pick her up. Mm -hmm. Offer to go to dinner beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to treat her. Just say, hey, I'll pick you up. Let's go have dinner. I have a bite to eat before. The food is everything. I'll pick you up. We'll go have a bite to eat. We'll come to eat. Or we'll go out, out for a drink afterwards. Whatever. But you pick her up and take her there. And then keep her on your list for when a national's in town. The next time we put a national in front of you, is in June. So everybody you're layering now that says not right now, you'll invite them in June. In June, on June, that weekend, Fifth. Friday, 15th. 15th, June 15th, you'll be able to invite them to that great event and have her put in front of national. But just layer, 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 and just talk to enough people. If you're frustrated, when anybody tells me they're frustrated, I ask to see their tracking sheet, and the numbers usually tell me exactly what's going on. How many bases they did and how many interviews they're sharing. Because it's all in numbers. And you might need to tweak a few little things, but I can't help you grow that or tweak your skills if there's nothing. You know, if this was if this was your month and you handed this in to me, well, guess what? There's nothing on there. I know that's a new month coming up and not this one, can you? But no, that's my two sheet. That's your, oh, two, let me, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. Because she has. Uh, <laughs> we have plenty of here. She's already got ten faces in brave for I got more than I love it. I love it. Jen, can I say something? I want to add something, yeah. okay? Because I personally work my yeah. business actually from home. I built my whole DIQ team right in my home after work. I gave, went out and got names and did referrals, whatever. But the most important thing that you need to um, do, ladies, is what Jen said. Because when you have the numbers working in your favor, you do not care. I did not care whether you showed up at my house and I had my table set. Oh, don't have to take off my suit. I have to take off my suit and go upstairs if you didn't show up. But I had 15, 20, 25, 30 people after you. That's why I didn't care. I was actually glad to have a day off. And Jen, I would call her every night. I had my class. I saw a roll. I was just having fun. So take control by the numbers because when you have the numbers working in your favor, you enjoy your journey a little bit better because you're not so stressed out about the one person that didn't call you back and this person didn't join your team. The thought was, don't you agree so much? Yeah, I just had a great yeah, time in yeah, Jack yeah, because of that. Yeah. I worked the numbers and I worked it consistently. You know, with with a schedule like Jen showed me. You know what I mean? It's just really yeah. all in the numbers, and you're so happy. You're just like, oh my God, I love Mary Kay. <laughs> <laughs> and just in here, and we're gonna end on this note because it is nine o'clock. Is just have fun in this business. Just you know, be yourself. Don't try to be me or a Carolyn or a Tanya or whoever. Be who you are. Be genuine to yourself. But have fun and share. Just share this unselfishly share the worst they can say is no but that's okay at least you know you've done your part I'm going to end on this note I always say it every class I do the reason why I'm so passionate about Mary Kay and sharing the marketing plan is that when a young lady graduates high school and she goes to college and she doesn't know what she wants to be when she grows up there's a list of what classes and courses she needs to take to be a doctor a lawyer a secretary an accountant she knows exactly what she needs to do and how hard she needs to work there is nothing that's laid in front of her and says here's how you can be an entrepreneur of your own company that puts your faith first family second career third and you can make six figures your first year if you're willing to do the work and it can change your life. Mary Kay. I have goosebumps every time I say it. So I say that every class, every interview I do, I leave it like that. May not be for you, but you may know somebody that this could benefit. I'll give you a referral bonus. If this isn't for you now, do you know anybody that this might benefit? And I ask for referrals because she might have a cousin or a neighbor or a friend who just lost her job or husband lost her job. You just never know unless you ask. So just have fun. Don't be afraid to ask. This is a journey for y'all. You're going to love it. You're, I'm not perfect at what I do. I still learn. I was excited to take notes sitting over here with Tanya. She's teaching because she's amazing at sharing this opportunity. I love how she talks. I love how her voice goes up and down. You know, I was like, I watch and her. Do you see? So you're going to learn and grow as you go. But just share. So we're going to leave you with a challenge. Your challenge is 
to get five people to be willing to listen to a marketing hotline, listen to a DVD, share this marketing plan with five people, sit down with you and do a practice interview. Um, we're gonna share. We're gonna share. You, we're gonna share that. We're, we didn't we give a copy of that. No, we didn't. Oh my give goodness! You a copy I didn't give you a copy of this oh, my goodness. stuff. All right, buddy. Here you go. <laughs> sorry. We'll put it on Facebook as well. We're so sorry, girls. I thought we just had but two sheets that week. I want you to do five practice follow-ups yourself, and then follow up with your director and let us know how you did. So be excited. Could be your mom. Could be your neighbor. Just practice with somebody sharing the marketing plan, doing an interview. <coughs> Again, maybe Leah Lachlan has locked her video, which would just really stink. Is that YouTube? Sure why that would be done, well, the only thing is she wasn't a national and she produced it, so it may be something with that. Like, you're not really as non-national, you know what I mean? That's why I said when I'm a national, but maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But there's plenty of hotlines. There's plenty of information online. You can get the information for somebody to hear and listen to the facts, and you follow up. So do five sharing appointments with people that you know and be willing to so tweet and be excited. And the worst you can get is a team member, right? Must get free hugs away. Thank you all for staying.